Hello everyone, today we have a special guest for you. At the age of 13, he's not only gone out and achieved his CCNA certification, but he's also created content for the ICND 1 and 2 exams for everyone to use for free. So stay tuned and he's joining us after this. Hello everyone and welcome back to IT Career Skills where we give you advice and insight on how to grow your career in the IT field. My name is Dakota and today we are joined by Chris Yu. So Chris, why don't you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, hi, um, I'm living in Australia. Um, I'm 13 years old this year, turning 14 in August. And recently, well, yesterday, I achieved my CCNA routing and switching certification. and Thank you for having me here. Awesome. So, uh, what made you, uh, you know, go out and take your ICD one and two exams at such a young age? What, what, what was your process? Why did you go ahead and go out and get that done? Uh, actually, late last year, um, I was thinking about what could I do at this age that could help me in my IT career in the future, and. Uh, I was digging around in the internet and I found Cisco's certification track. And um, I thought because networking is kind of the basic basis to pretty much any IT field like security, uh, cloud, they all need a basic fundamental networking knowledge. So I decided to go with Cisco's um, well-known networking certification, uh, the CSENT and CCNA. And that's what really drove me to take the ICND1 and ICND2. Awesome. So, so what was the exams like? Um, was was it really difficult for you? You know, what what kind of challenges did you have when you were studying for them? Um, so for the exam itself, um, I found that it was quite hard because it asked you for the knowledge that wasn't really covered in other learning materials, and it goes really deep into those fine details um, that you may have missed during your studies or uh, may have overlooked during your studies. And that's what made those exams difficult. Um, and I was kind of under time pressure as well. Um, uh, I felt like I was pressured under time because I had I had uh, simulations in the, in the beginning of the exam and that kind of wasted my, I spent my time. So uh, yeah, I felt pressured by time. And because the exam asked for those fine details that you just might've missed, uh, I think that's what made it difficult. Oh, awesome. So, uh, what did you, what uh, material did you use to study for your exam? Um, did you use like an e-learning platform? Did you use books? Um, what what? How did you study for it? Uh, so for ICND one, I mainly used um, the official cert guide. It it literally just has ninety five percent of things that you have to know for ICND one, and to top that five percent off, uh, I bought both on. Uh, Ex exam simulator max um so it has five practice exams and it really gets you prepped up for the actual deal um because it has things that are not covered by the ocg um and it has lots of great information in it as well as um getting you prepared for the actual exam uh and for icnd2 i used the official cert guide for icnd2 and uh, both on practice exams, but this time I added in uh, Chris Bryant's YouTube Udemy course. Um, uh, what Udemy, what Chris Bryant's Udemy course did was it covered the things that were not covered by the official cert guide. So for uh, I recommend the Udemy course for people who want to achieve CCNP routing and switching afterwards because it has those uh, a bit of those skills required to go a bit above and beyond the CCNA, uh, what's covered in the CCNA. So awesome. I used those two. Awesome. So um, many people out there might not know that you actually went out there and cr not only, uh, you know, when you're studying, you went out there and created study material. You had your study notes and you put them out there on the internet for everyone to use. And I, I've heard actually from many people even today um, talking about how great your study notes are. What, uh, what drove you to, you know, put those out there and try to help others? 
Well, actually, uh, when I first created those study notes, uh, I wasn't thinking of sharing on the internet. I didn't think it would be that good. Uh, but as I was studying, as I was going through the official cert guide, um, and and when I eventually finished it, I realized that this this piece of document could possibly help others uh, get their certification. So I decided to um, post these online so that anyone could use it. Um, yeah, within the constraints of copyright. Um, yeah, I shared it with people, and it seems like they they liked it. Um, uh, for I say new one, I, I saw literally many people like uh, some dads with children, uh, university students, um, people like getting ready for their job interview, and there were so many people from all walk, all walks of life. And uh, because I saw that from I say new one notes, uh, I decided to make an uh, I say new two notes and post them online. And uh, I I think that I, that helped a lot of people, and I'm. And I'm happy that people could use it, um, print it out, look, look over it, uh, and just use it as a study guide to get their exam. Awesome. And uh, again, you know, t tell the get, you know, everyone else uh, where to find these notes if you know they haven't already if you used them or uh, looked at them. Uh, you can find all of my notes, uh, whether it be configuration and verification checklists. Uh, the ICND1 and ICND2 notes themselves, uh, they range from 60 pages, 37 pages to, uh, there's there's one where I did 450 pages, but that's <laughs> I'm not summarized. That's just literally like taking most of the stuff from the OCG directly. You can find these all on my Twitter uh, account, which is Twitter at CCNA for life. Uh, and uh, as for the, the big chunks of notes, the ICND one 450 page notes, um, and ICND two 125 page notes. Uh, you have to uh, uh, directly message me the proof of purchase because it has images uh, that are directly taken from the official cert guide, and I don't want to like you no know, avoiding copyright issues. So they they would have to directly message me on Twitter, um, uh, showing proof of purchase so that I can actually. Give them the notes. Awesome. All other notes, you can just find them lying on my Twitter page. Awesome. Well, yeah, and we'll make sure and put a link to those in the description below for anyone who wants to go over there and check that out. So, um, what are your plans now that you've achieved your CCNA certification? Ah, uh, so, so since I has, has achieved my CCNA writing and switching exam, um, I was actually thinking of different parts. Uh, I was thinking of a CCNA cyber op certification. I was thinking of CompTIA's Security Plus certification because my main goal, my end goal is to get in the security field, get in the cyber security field. I was thinking of many different certifications and um, a few weeks before the actual exam, I decided to go for the CCNA cyber ops certification because that would have, that would give me the fundamental knowledge to get me into the cybersecurity field, and 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 will just build a solid basis for my cybersecurity uh, field, uh, and and before that, uh, and uh, and yesterday, um, I was thinking about uh, what could I do to possibly maybe earn my money for the CCNA Cyberops exam fees because those exam fees are not cheap. They they're like four hundred dollars a pop. And uh, so I decided to do something so that I could raise some money for my exam. And so I decided before I moved on to my CCNA cyber ops studies, um, I decided to create a Udemy ICND2 practice exam because all the ICND2 material was fresh in my mind. I just took the exam yesterday and I thought this would help people out and also raise some money for my CCNA cyber ops. So I'll, I'll be spending the next 12 days or so um, making Udemy practice exams. Awesome. That, that's actually really cool because I studying for the uh, ICND one and two exams myself, I noticed there's there, there's a good amount of practice exams out there and some good um, content out there, um, but it's not as much as some of the you know, other IT certifications like the A plus and stuff. Um, that's one reason I kind of started also doing some study groups on um, the channel here. It's just because I felt like there is a lack of um, you know, content out there for the CCNA exams. So. 
Yeah, uh, I, I, hope, I hope my practice exams could could potentially help, like just even a tiny amount of people, uh, to get their CCNA certification. Absolutely, and you also have a a Patreon account as well, correct? Uh yes. So we'll, we'll make sure and link that up in the description uh, down below if anyone else wants to go out and support your cause there. Awesome. Um, so what's your long-term career plan? Uh, where would you like to end up in the IT field? Uh, as I mentioned before, I want to get into the cybersecurity career uh, path, but obviously cybersecurity is a big area in itself. Uh, there is red team, there's blue team, there's... Uh, uh, security operation center, uh, penetration testing. There's there's a wide range. Uh, within that, I want to go for the red team side. So the red team, uh, exploitation, penetration testing, um, bug bounty. Those those areas um, in the in the future, hopefully. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right now the security field's in high demand, and uh, you know it's, it's a very very desired career skill. And you know, s starting at such a young age with your CCNA certification, really building your IT fundamentals there is really just going to advance you in your career. So, absolutely. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to add today? You know, anything else you want to tell the viewers? Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button, of course. <laughs> for all videos um and also just when you're studying for a ccna certification exam or for any certification exam make sure you go a bit above and beyond what the exam topics ask you for example um ccna routing and switching exam topics mentions ospf but um it, it mentions uh, excluding lsas perhaps but maybe just know the types of lsas just go a bit above and beyond so that you're actually really ready, 100% ready for the exam. Yeah. Awesome. So actually I do have one more question. So um, a lot of people struggle with, or are more or less afraid of subnetting. How did you get through subnetting on the CCNA exam? Uh, sub, <laughs> well, for me, I didn't have that much of a problem with subnetting. Uh, but when I went through the, official cert guide chapters on subnetting. Um, I just did, uh, I just went into subnettingpractice.com. Uh, that's a great place to practice your subnetting skills. And if you spend perhaps 15 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, you, you'll eventually be able to do these um, subnetting math quick, fast, and uh, you'll be able to really extend your skills in subnetting. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, just if you try your best, if you spend 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day practicing for it, you'll eventually get better and you'll eventually be able to uh, crack these uh, subnetting math questions like real fast. Awesome. Um, another question a lot of people have when they're studying for the exam is, do I go out and do physical uh, equipment to lab on or should I do a virtual lab? What did you use when you were studying? So when I was studying, I used Packet Tracer, but I used Packet Tracer mobile because I didn't have a Windows PC. So I downloaded an Android emulator, uh, got PT on it, and then just uh, went, went wild with it, just create topologies. If, if you have a virtual lab, um, one of the good things about that is you can just create any topology you want. You don't have hardware restrictions. You don't have um, price restrictions. Um, you can just put a hundred switches and configure SCP VTP on all of them. Um, whereas physical, uh, physical labs, you, you have, you have to pay some amount of money to get those equipment. Um, you do have hardware restrictions, but what's good about that is you, uh, Packet Tracer has some software and CLI restrictions, whereas on physical hardware, uh, you don't have that. You can just do any command. Uh, for example, PT, uh, Packet Tracer doesn't allow SNMP. Um, so on physical hardware, you can configure SNMP, um, you can configure anything, and you can uh, have some experience with hardware problems like cable issues or perhaps the hardware malfunctioning. So they, they do have advantages and disadvantages. But for me, I used a virtual lab, and I think uh, at the CCNA level, a virtual lab 
would suffice. Uh, but if you want to get to CCMP level, CCIE level, I you, you should uh, look into physical labs and um, perhaps look into Cisco's viral. That's a good virtual lab. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. And yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, I, I'm currently, like I said, I'm studying for the my CSENT and the ICND one and two, and then I plan on moving on to uh, my CCMP route switch as well. So, um, and yeah, you know, I've gone out and actually purchased, you know, actual physical hardware. You know, I have uh, three routers and two switches I've gone out and bought off of eBay. I got my whole lab set up for less than $100. And one thing I did is, um, when I I work in the IT field currently, and I've I've talked to my boss about the lab I have at home, and he took me actually back into our server room and said, "Okay, here you go. Here's a wireless LAN controller. Okay, here's a couple of APs. We're not using them anymore. Here, take them and add them to your la uh, lab." So that's a really cool thing if you're already in the field. You know, you can ask your employer, "Hey, you know, do you have any old equipment that I can use or borrow?" Well, you know, because I'm studying for this exam, so. But then again, Packet Tracer, it's free. It's it's a great, great resource to use as well. So awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show today. Um, and you guys, if you haven't checked it out, I'll leave links in the descriptions to uh, Chris's uh, Twitter account. Go over there and check it out. And make sure you subscribe to him. And uh, go over there. And uh, if, you, if you really enjoy his content, go, uh, go over to his Patreon account and help him uh, advance his career there. So. Awesome. Well, Chris, again, thank you for joining us today. And uh, until next time, everyone, take it easy.